So now our database is set up to permit access only to users who know the password for either anonymous or root level access. But how about if we wanted to entirely disable anonymous access? As mentioned, that should be one of your, or should be one of your objectives when designing a DBMS for your enterprise, and that is to remove the anonymous user. So let's label this section, which is simply to increase security by removing the anonymous account. So increase DBMS security by removing anonymous accounts. So our first step or first approach or crack at increasing the security of the system was to strengthen the access by requiring a password for each account. Now we simply want to get rid of anonymous. In order to do so, we're going to use a delete statement, which happens to be a popular SQL statement. So we'll use delete, and we'll put it in caps, although MySQL treats statements in a case insensitive fashion. We'll use a delete statement to remove anonymous accounts. Now there are two anonymous accounts as you can see in the select user query that we recently ran. Both anonymous accounts show up blank in the user column. We need to talk a little bit about the MySQL database and its tables with respect to permissions and user account management. But before we do so, let's show you how we'd remove the accounts. We want to run a delete statement. And that delete statement will look as follows. Whenever using keywords, you should capitalize them, although it's not a requirement, it's just for readability. Delete from, and you can specify optionally the name of the database followed by a dot or a period followed by the name of the table. This is standard SQL nomenclature or syntax, but you don't need to specify the name of the database. It's optional, but you could if you wanted to in the event that you weren't currently in the context of the database which you intend to perform the operation on. So we'll delete from user where user is equal to, and in this case the user is equal to blank, so we'll simply specify an open at, followed by a closed single quote to indicate that the user column contains nothing or blank. And we'll delete from the user table. So let's go ahead and execute this the, the query and you should see that it's deleted two rows from a four row table. Let's now re-execute a select user comma host comma password from the mysql.user table and you'll see that only two users exist and both are root level accounts with full privileges to the MySQL database which is the default design as intended by the authors of the database system. We should confirm that the anonymous accounts have been removed by attempting to connect from the local host as a non-privileged user. That's simple to do so let's label this section confirm that anonymous accounts have been removed. And that's quite simple to do by simply logging in or we should say attempting to connect to MySQL using MySQL client from localhost since localhost is a trusted host in one of the grant tables which we've yet to discuss but nonetheless you get the picture localhost is trusted so in a separate shell We'll control shift T to enter that sh separate shell. You'll see that we're logged in as a non-privileged user called Linux CBT. And the reason why we know that the user is non-privileged within the Linux space is because the prompt by default does not end with a hash mark as is typically the case with a root account. And also we tend to do most of our work as a non-privileged user anyway. But you can tell that we're not logged in as root because it says in the bash prompt the user Linux CBT. But again, there is no direct correlation between the local Linux user and the MySQL user. Whenever you attempt to connect to a MySQL database and the user who you're currently logged into the Linux system does not exist, or if the user doesn't exist in the MySQL database, then MySQL simply attempts to connect you as the anonymous user. 
but now there's no anonymous user, so let's attempt to connect. We'll execute a MySQL, followed by the P option. Now, the reason why we're specifying P to have the client prompt us for a password is because we've secured all of the accounts on a system. I'll be, there are only two accounts, and they're both root accounts. They both require passwords. So we do need to specify a dash P. If we don't, watch what happens. Access is denied for the user Linux CBT, which was parsed from the shell at localhost. Now let's go ahead and specify P, and then we'll enter the password that we've specified for both users on the system. Now as you can see, we were, we we're connected to the server, and let's execute a select user, or optionally select current underscore user followed by open and close parentheses and you'll see that we're logged in as a blank user at localhost. Now let's explain what's happening here. Whenever you execute commands such as delete or typical SQL DDL commands within the MySQL terminal monitor, you tend to need to flush privileges, especially when the commands affect privileges of users on the system. So the one step that we missed from our delete or deletion of the anonymous accounts was to actually flush the privileges. And this is because the following occurs when MySQL starts. It reads into memory the contents of the grant tables which we've yet to discuss. In fact in the next section we spend time covering the grant tables and the key columns in the key grant tables. When MySQL starts it reads the grant tables. So let's go ahead and flush the privileges. The command is pretty straightforward. It's simply as we've just mentioned flush space privileges. So we'll include a one-liner in our notes which simply says don't forget to execute in between single quotes, flush privileges. It is case insensitive, but we're specifying upper for readability so that you know when you read it that it means to execute the command. But generally, any commands that you see between single quotes that we specify are commands that are to be executed verbatim. So let's execute flush privileges, and we should terminate the command with a semicolon to instruct the terminal monitor to submit the command to the MySQL daemon. And now the privileges have been flushed, and the separate window will exit the current session. When you flush privileges, by the way, the user isn't logged out autom automatically. So notice, we are logged in as anonymous, but flushing the privileges will not kick the user out of a current terminal monitor. And that's by design in the event that if in case the user is executing a transactional process, which most DBMS processes are, then the process will be permitted to execute so that it doesn't corrupt data. So in other words, it's the fact that users aren't kicked out of terminal monitor is by design to prevent or reduce the amount of data corruption that can be introduced into the environment. And that's logical because, again, the user could be executing a process that runs, let's say, for 20 minutes or so, and any portion of the process that isn't transactional or does not cause a rollback could cause corrupt data or introduce corrupt data into the DBMS. Let's quit the, exec the existing session by using a backslash Q and then attempt to connect again by specifying the password. And notice this time we can't get in. We'll try it again and we can't get in because MySQL doesn't recognize the user Linux CBT at localhost and the anonymous account is properly disabled. So two steps are required to delete the default anonymous accounts. They include the following. You execute a delete statement and we've specified the delete statement as follows. We should include in our notes here. So we simply executed delete from mysql.user which is the name of the database followed by the name of the table and this is standard SQL notation which means on the left is the database and following the dot or the period is the name of the table to operate on so delete from mysql.user where this is our clause which allows us to match only interesting columns or interesting rows that that is on certain columns where user, that's the name of the column, is equal to open single quote, close single quote, and then terminate the line with a semicolon. So this is the command verbatim. Now since we do use single quotes in this particular query, it's a good idea to enclose everything in between double quotes. And you'll find that's a common syntax within a MySQL environment, where 
on the web in the documentation you'll see heavy usage of double quotes instead of single quotes because single quotes are reserved for internal use in clauses such as like where and so on so delete from user step one and step two is to flush privileges flush privileges or flushing the privileges will allow MySQL, the current running instance of MySQL, to reread the grant tables to determine who is permitted access to the DBMS. Now that the privileges are flushed, the user can no longer log in as the anonymous account. However, if we do specify dash u followed by a root, then the user will be able to log in providing the user knows the password for the root user. Let's try that. And now when we execute a select current underscore user, you'll see that we're logged in as root. And if we elect to use the MySQL database, and again, the use command is one of those few commands that doesn't require a semicolon at the end. Now that we've changed into the context of the MySQL database, we can execute show tables. You'll see that there's some key tables, including the grant tables, which we'll discuss in the next section. And then if we execute select, user comma host comma password or any combination of these two included columns from the user table you'll see that the only two users are root at localhost and root at the actual host name Linux CBT DB1 permitted currently great so it's pretty straightforward to operate on existing accounts but your vanilla setup should reflect the following which is you have disabled anonymous accounts and you have secured the two default root accounts because again the root account has full access full access that is to the entire DBMS which means that the root account can create databases drop databases create users drop users and pretty much do anything corrupt data introduce new data and so on to your DBMS so you do need to be careful and watch out for any malicious connectivity to your DBMS and again the connections can be made from anywhere once a user or a malicious user has the username and password they'll be able to connect and make changes that they're not authorized to make now next we're gonna focus on what are called the grant tables the tables that constitute permissions within the access control system used by MySQL